BBC One premiered a behind-the-scenes documentary focusing on King Charles's coronation year. The Princess Royal took a starring role, providing heartfelt commentary as, as we were giving a fly-on-the-wall look at the life of the new monarch and his big day. Well, let's find out more. Joining us now is former royal correspondent for The Sun, the legend that is Charles Ray. Charles, Hello. Merry Christmas. Always a pleasure to see you. Uh, he can't hear us. We're going to go back to him in a minute. I, I wanted to ask him about how he felt that the Royals have had as a year this year. 1992, of course, was the famous Annus Horribilis. But I think this year has been an absolute corker. And the documentary um, yesterday was the cherry on the cake. Let's put that now to Charles Ray, who I think can now hear us. Charles, I was just about to say, I'll have to say it again. It's always a pleasure to see you, and you're an absolute legend. Now said it twice. Charles, uh, 1992, of course, the famous um, Annus, Annus Horribilis. 2023, I think, looking back, was a fabulous year, and the documentary yesterday behind the coronation really capped off a wonderful year for the Royals. I think it was fabulous in some parts, uh, Martin. I don't think it was so fabulous for the royal family in other parts, i.e. the start of the year when Spare came out and Harry decided to uh, put a bucket load over the royal family. And, of course, at the end of the year, uh, we had Endgame, which I know Omid Scobie and the uh, Sussexes uh, say they don't have anything to do with it, but I don't believe them. I think it was a cooperation. Uh, it, it, I think that backfired on them rather than the royal family, to be perfectly honest. But still, it was there. And you've still had, of course, the uh, revelations of uh, uh, what's going on with Prince Andrew, although he's denied all the allegations. But he's in for another tough start of the year with this, these names being released uh, by a court uh, in, I think it's January the 2nd. So it's not going to be very good. But in terms, for people like us, it's been a great year because there's been an awful lot of royal stories and it, that's what we do. And Charles, the documentary itself, um, some very touching moments, of course, particularly I liked it when William was helping Charles with the clasp on his cape and Charles joked about his sausage fingers and they seem to have a very warm and loving relationship. And the great thing about documentaries like this, it peels away the pomp and the ceremony and it allows us to see the, these people as a bit more like us and that, it, that in itself is a great triumph. You're right. Uh, you're right, Aunt Martin. This was probably, for me, the best programme over the Christmas period. I thought it was fabulous. And I think we we saw you, 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 you've stripped away all the pomp and the ceremony and everything else. But it also laid the lie that Harry came out with that he was denied of hugs and uh, kisses when he was younger. Um, we, we saw a king yesterday who was hugging and kissing anybody who had a pulse, to be perfectly honest. And he was very, very uh, tactile with his own uh, uh, grandchildren. And, uh, you know, we, we, we saw both Charles and Camilla in a, in a real great light um, and if you were um, working for the palace, I think you would be sitting back having a stiff whiskey, thinking, "Yeah, we've done it. It's been a good job." And all the best to my old chum Robert Hardman, who was one of the main members of the team responsible for coll coll collating all this. He was from the Daily Mail. And Charles, can I ask you about Mike Tyndall? Mike Tyndall, of course, the former England rugby legend, uh, married to Zara. Wonderful piece in today's Dele Telegraph, talking about how he's becoming almost like a surrogate brother figure to William. That the, the pair seem to have a tremendous bond, and I think it's just a wonderful thing to see. I, yes, it is a wonderful thing to see. We, we see occasionally throughout the year. We've seen a few pictures of uh, Mike Tyndall in situations, happy situations, laughing situations uh, with uh, Prince William. And on uh, uh, Monday uh, at, at Sandringham, we saw Mike Tyndall with George with his arm around him and George was looking up with all smiles and everything else and he was and Louis was walking down holding the hand of Mia Tyndall. It just goes to show how close <clears throat> they are as families. Now, sitting back in Montecito is the real brother and I should imagine if he's seeing scenes like that and reading things like what's been having in the Telegraph, he's not going to be a happy bunny at all. But that doesn't matter. I mean, Tyndall fills that gap mm. that I think Prince of Wales needs.
and he does it very, very well, Mike Tyndall. He is a man's man. There's no question about that. Yeah, and I think you're dead right, Charles. And, and that picture of him with his arm around George, I, I just saw was, was wonderful. And it shows again that somebody who's definitely not from a royal background, you know, he, he came from a, from a very humble background. Um, and yet, um, he's got this ratio where he, he can banter away. Apparently, he calls William one pint willy because he's not the best of drinkers. Yeah. That's right. They released that on the Rob Burroughs uh, podcast, he and Zara. And Zara was, was heard saying, about, you're going to be in a lot of trouble for that one. Um, so, yeah, yeah the, 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 the pairs, the pairs, the, the Tyndalls and the, and the Waleses get on very, very well. And it, quite rightly so, they're a great family. And this is how families should, you know, get on well with each other. Yeah, I totally agree. Tyndall was raised in West Yorkshire, the son of a social worker mother and a banker father, of course, renowned for liking a few drinks himself. And apparently William calls him Baldy in return, something, yes. Charles, I would never dream of saying to you, especially not at Christmas. Charles, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. Enjoy your Christmas and a very, very happy new year. Hope to speak to you many, many more times on the show.